My name is Sally Goddard. I'm the mother of Captain Nicola Goddard, who was killed in Panjway, Afghanistan on May 17, 2006. Nicola was the first um, female soldier to be killed in combat. The, the day Nicola was killed was the day they coordinated, she was responsible for coordinating air and land fire on an, on an enemy target. Obviously, in order to prepare for this interview, I did a fair bit of research trying to learn more about your daughter, the foundation, and her legacy. She has really amazed me. She is now ranked as one of my Canadian heroes, like Terry Fox. As I researched your daughter, I noticed more similarities between our upbringings. My parents are both educators, and while we did not travel like you did, I was raised with similar values. I was taught that all people are equal. Both of my parents were very supportive of me doing everything a man could. I grew up boxing and wrestling, <laughs> and through sports, my eyes were open to discrimination. I'd like to become a doctor, and because I want to have an impact on the world. I'm a cadet, I'm a range sergeant, and I'm considering doing my studies through the military college, and I'm considering serving as a doctor. I know that I'll be faced with challenges, including discrimination. What do you think your daughter's um, advice for me would be? You know, I can remember uh, Nicola coming back. We had moved to, Cal sorry, we had moved to Calgary after Nicola had gone to RMC, the Royal Military College. And so Nicola would have been in her second year at that point. And uh, she came and she said, I don't know that I, if I can do this. She said, I don't know if I'm cut out for it. She said, the role of women, it, it's difficult. It's more difficult than it is for men. And we talked about it. And I suppose if I had been a different kind of person, I would have said, you know, well, just leave. You know, go to a civilian university and, you know, let other people deal with this. Um, but we talked about whether, it's, whether change comes from within, whether you're within an organization and you bring about change, or whether you're outside an organization and you try and bring about change, and which is the better place to be. And obviously, from Nicola's point of view, the better place was being within the organization. And I think Nicola learned a lot about dealing with discrimination, learned how to, how to manage it, and, and learned when to, um, when to act and when not to act. Dear Mom and Dad, another proud moment. We were in a village and we're just getting our kid on to walk to the next town. I had attracted a crowd of five men aged 15 to 60 who were watching me. It is kind of funny. I can sort of see why the Afghan women cover up their faces. The men are pretty bold. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about walking through a town without attracting a crowd. It will be quite humbling after all the tension I'm getting here. A man that must have been at least 60 came over to me to help me put on my rucksack. He almost took a knee lifting it up, but he did it. It was really neat. Anyway, the interpreter came up and had a two, three minute conversation in Pashto with five men who were watching me. Then he turned to me and said, Please excuse their staring. They are just very surprised that you are a woman working with all these men. I've told them that you climbed over a mountain with us, your, with your heavy bag, and that you had no problems. They think that you must be very strong. I explained to them that you are just like the men and that you can do everything that they can do the same. It was perhaps the greatest statement of equality that I've ever heard. And it was given by a Pakistani raised Afghan male in the middle of an Af Afghan village that is only accessible by a five kilometer walk up the mountain. It just goes to show that anything is possible and that stereotypes are often completely wrong. People volunteer. We, we are not a nation that conscripts people. So people who volunteer to fight to join the military know perfectly well what the end could be. It's like people who become policemen, people who become RCMP officers, people who become nurses, people who become doctors. 
those are all frontline people. They're people that are involved in day-to-day -day decisions and traumas, and uh, they could all be heroes as well. Dear Mom and Dad, the days seem to move along at their own pace. Some days fly by and others creep along. We are officially at the halfway point now. I can't believe that I've been here for three months. In some ways, it feels like I've been here forever. In others, as if I just got here. I am sort of getting used to things, I guess. I try to remind myself to appreciate every experience, even those I don't really enjoy. I have been thinking a lot about fate lately. It was such an accident of birth that we ended up here when we did. That we are now where we are now with the choices that are available to us. It seems to me that we have such a burden of responsibility to make the world a better place for those who were born in far worse circumstances. It is more than donating money to charities. It is taking action and trying to make things better. My current job and role in the Afghanistan part of that, but it is more the non-governmental -gover organizations that come later. They are the ones really making the difference. I like to think that my being here means they will be able to come to that much sooner and operate more freely. I will be looking for more opportunities to volunteer in Wainwright and to really try and make a difference. It is very humbling to be here and a part of, to be a part of something much larger than myself. Love always, Nicola.